For COVID-19 clues, researchers look to the sewer. You can go on and get all the sewer jokes out of your system. But Amy Kirby and Mia Mattioli have probably heard them already. Amy, a microbiologist, and Mia, an environmental engineer, are both specialists in wastewater and how it can carry disease-causing germs. Now, they're trying to turn samples of sewage into an early warning sign of COVID-19 in the community. We're both in the waterborne disease prevention field. So we do a lot of wastewater and fecal testing. Amy says, poop jokes are a regular part of our career. In the past, Mia and Amy have worked together to trace outbreaks of disease back to contaminated water in places like lettuce farms and water parks. What they're doing now is the flip side to their previous work, starting with contaminated water and using it to identify pockets of illness. When people get infected with COVID-19, pieces of the virus can be found in feces. So when researchers like Mia and Amy find those bits of virus in sewer water, we know that there's somebody in that community who has COVID-19, Mia says. By taking many samples over time, they can watch whether the amount of virus within those samples is going up or down. That might tell local health departments whether an outbreak is getting better or worse or provide an extra insight on when other data are murky. The trends in the sewer water concentration have been shown to be a leading indicator in the number of cases, Mia says. When the number of COVID-19 positive samples in the sewage go up, typically three to seven days later, the number of reported cases also goes up. Although this approach to identifying COVID-19 is still considered experimental, the science behind it is not. Wastewater surveillance has been used in countries where polio is still a threat to look for evidence of polio within a community. In the United States, it's been used as a way to estimate opioid drug use within a community by testing the sewage for chemicals left behind after the body digests those drugs. Amy and Mia are still trying to work out some of the details, such as how the amount of virus in a sample relates to the number of cases in people and how fast the virus can decay within wastewater. But tests across several states are currently underway. If successful, they hope this approach could be used as an additional tool for the current pandemic as well as to look for other health issues such as foodborne illness or resistance to antibiotics. Amy says we are working hard to develop these new and innovative approaches as another way to identify the spread of COVID-19 within a community. Mia and Amy both grew up in Atlanta, where the CDC headquarters is located. On Mia's first day, she encountered a group of her old middle and high school teachers 
who were waiting to tour the agency's visitor center, including a guidance counselor who told her, this is where you always wanted to be. Mia was always interested in public health, which led her to the University of Georgia, where she got her biomedical engineering degree and then moved on to Stanford University for both her master's and a PhD within environmental engineering. Mia started working on water, sanitation, and hygiene issues while doing graduate work in a sub-Saharan Africa and devoted herself to that field back in the United States. She first came to CDC as a postdoctoral student scholar in 2015 and then joined the agency full-time the following year. Amy first came to CDC on an emerging infectious disease fellowship between her undergraduate studies, which were also at UGA, and her graduate school at the University at Buffalo in New York. During grad school, she grew more interested in environmental microbiology and disease. After several years of teaching at Emory University, located next door to the CDC, Amy was drawn back to the agency. Amy said, I felt this draw to come back to a place where you can really do science and it has an immediate application. Amy says, she returned to the CDC as a full-time researcher in 2017, working on the problem of antibiotic resistance, a problem that threatens to roll back decades of progress made possible by life-saving drugs. Amy says it was a great opportunity to come in and work on environmental micro microbiology in an implied way. Their work gets them in the field more often than many of their CDC colleagues, which has made for some memorable moments on the job. Mia has flown over the Colorado River in the gunner's seat of a National Guard helicopter to investigate signs of fecal contamination in that critical southwestern waterway. And she has also watched an alligator swishing its tail as she took samples from a Louisiana marsh. And on one assignment where Amy and Mia were working together, Utility workers at a Texas water treatment plant tried to surprise their team with a snake that they found while sampling. Instead of reacting with alarm and to the worker's surprise, a colleague snatched the snake away for a quick photo op with the team. Snakes aside, Mia says that utility workers have been the unsung heroes behind this pandemic. Mia says they are really stepping up to protect public health and not just treating our sewage, but helping us understand this outbreak and how we can respond to it. Amy and Mia are among more than 7,000 people at the CDC who have taken part in the response to COVID-19. Their work has helped us to better understand how to identify the spread of COVID-19 within a community. Amy comments, that you can come into the response and it's like 
drinking from a fire hose of information coming in. But there is a whole structure in place that supports you so that you can focus on the science and help save lives.